Yep. Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Caden Howlett. I am a geologist and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Arizona. If you've been on the channel before, you might know that I study the origins of mountain belts. I study broadly plate tectonics, the behavior of the outermost shell of the planet Earth. And I guess the purpose of today's video, which will be, if all goes according to plan, my first tutorial, <laughs> uh, it goes beyond just being a tutorial. If you need to create a decent looking hill shade in a GIS software, it might be helpful. But I think for me, the primary purpose of this video is to show you that even though my science and the science of my colleagues and my friends revolves around really huge questions about the Earth's surface, there's a lot of behind the scenes skills that we acquire addressing these questions. And one of them that I'm really passionate about is GIS, Geographic Information Sciences. Simply, this can be thought of as cartography, map making. And there's a lot more to it other than that, but almost every geologist I know has a deep appreciation for maps and the map making process. And so I'm gonna give a tutorial in ArcGIS Pro today of how I like, say I'm making figure one for a manuscript. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna show you how I would get data off of the internet, open, available to everyone, bring it into a software and then manipulate it so that it looks better. And the demonstration is just that there are creative aspects of becoming a geologist that you might not know about. And I wanna do my best to communicate that because there's so many rich opportunities awaiting you if you are trying to figure out whether or not you should become a geoscientist or not, regardless of the subdiscipline. So with that preamble, I am going to share my screen down here and we are going to go get some DEM data off of a website. Okay, so here we are. I'm literally on my home page. I'm gonna take us to Google. There might be some geologists out there who don't know where to get good uh, small scale digital elevation model data, say SRTM data. So I'm gonna look up, you'll see it in my <laughs> SRTM data download. You'll see it in my history here. I guess before I even start talking about acquiring this stuff, SRTM stands for Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. Uh, this was a mission that took place aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor. This was in early 2000, so a long time ago. One of the coolest NASA missions ever, in my opinion. If you haven't read about SRTM, go check it out. Um, generally speaking, this mission gave us one arc second or 30 meter resolution of topography data over 80% of Earth's surface. And so this is extremely valuable to people who are interested in uh, the topographic expression of mountain building and also just obviously all the topography on the continents. Uh, how could you not love it? And so there's this awesome website. You see the fourth thing down here. I found this, uh, someone did this external to NASA, I believe. Uh, shout out to Derek Watkins, who created these tiles and compiled them. He created this interface using Mapbox. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna, I have an area of interest. I'm gonna grab a couple DEMs, North 47, West 113. So you can see I'm just downloading the DEM here. And it's gonna open, it's gonna be in a zipped folder. So I'm going to extract this. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna put stuff in my downloads folder, uh, just so we're not getting too complicated. There, so our first DEM's in. I'm gonna grab the westward adjacent DEM as well. North 47, West 114. And I'm interested in this area and these series of tiles uh, because it's near my home in Polson, Montana. And it's also has really interesting topography. So I just put both of those, uh, you know, uh, these are all available to you on your, on your internet connection, <laughs> so to speak. And now we're in ArcGIS Pro. 
And this is a software that is licensed by the university. Maybe you use QGIS. There are free versions of similar softwares. And at least when we get to creating a nice looking DEM, the same kind of general map approach will be, will be there, uh, just buttons in different places, basically. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, I, this is just a little project I made for this tutorial. I'm gonna add our data and I'm gonna go, I'm already in my downloads and this is really disorganized, but I'm gonna grab both of our tiles and I'm gonna open these guys. We're gonna build pyramids. Don't worry about this step, some raster stuff. <clears throat> and here we are, look at how cool that is. So th that fast, I got raw uh, .hgt files. This is the file format for SRTM data. And you can see we have two, two tiles here. And these are the ones I selected directly adjacent to one another. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make one mosaic raster. And this is something that we deal with a lot. <clears throat> In my experience, and I might be getting a little into the weeds here, Whenever I have a geologic field area of interest, whether it's some raster data or geologic maps or whatever I'm bringing in, my field area always uh, seems to end up at the four corners of where these things come together. So I have to bring in multiple tiles and they're much easier and more efficiently handled if they're a single raster. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go Alt-Q and I'm, I recently searched this, you can see, we're gonna use a mosaic to new raster. Very simply, the only options for our input rasters are the ones that we have open in the project. For the output location, I'm gonna put it in my downloads just cause that's where my other stuff is. I'm gonna call this mosaic uh, dem.tiff, which is a common file extension for digital elevation models. I'm familiar with uh, these kinds of data, so I'm gonna change this to 16-bit unsigned because I know that that's in the metadata and that is the format of these tiles. And these are rasters with one band, so I gotta specify that, it's required. And then I'm gonna run this mosaic and you can see it running down there in the bottom right. And we're gonna create one raster and that's what we just did, so I'll turn it off. You'll see underneath we have our two tiles. And in fact, I'm gonna select those and I'm just gonna get them out of here. Clean, maybe I'll rename this and just call it uh, Montana DEM. Sweet, you can see our elevation across this whole area ranges from about one to three kilometers above sea level shown in the contents panel. And now we're looking at something pretty nice. But if we're making a figure, or looking at this, especially from an oblique angle in a later stage of analysis, <clears throat> it can look a lot better. And that's, here's where we get into the tutorial. Maybe I'll have a timestamp for anyone who's actually interested in these uh, map techniques. But if you're staying with me, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, surface analysis here. So I'm gonna come in to this analysis bar here we're gonna open raster functions. And this is where you start to see, I mean, you can only imagine how many different things are possible with such a software. Down here at the very bottom, we have surface and I'm gonna create a hill shade. And this is remarkably simple compared to some of the analysis I could be doing. Um, but I'm just inputting my raster, I'm not changing any of the defaults. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a hill shade and it's gonna put it on top of our DEM. And you'll notice a change immediately. So probably looks like a hill shade you've seen in the past. However, we can use these different, uh, I guess, surfaces in combination to make something that looks a lot better. And I'll say right now that we're working at, a, at an extremely uh, small scale and it's kind of counterintuitive, but what that means is we're looking at a large area of Earth's surface. This is really good for SRTM data because it's only 30 meter resolution. And that is um, very coarse compared to say the one third arc second data that you might be using from the USGS. And you can see that when you zoom in here, like if you're mapping a really small area, this is not gonna be good enough. It's really coarse looking, but if we're doing regional tectonics and an overview of the thrust belt here, 
which is shown broadly as we transition into the Great Plains from west to east here, this is adequate. And that being said, we're going to make this look a little better. And just to keep track of all of this stuff, I'm just going to call this hillshade for simplicity. And we're going to come into raster layer. I like to put the hillshade at about 60% transparency. And you can see, like, you can start to see uh, that's the full the full DEM underneath and you can see adjusting the transparency it really starts to bring out some of the ridges and some of the topography especially if we come into more intense stuff so we, we're just looking for a sweet spot obviously that's our DEM you can see what I'm talking about like man it's starting to bring some some energy here so I'll change this to 60 it's already looking better in my opinion already getting closer to a figure one but there's something else we can do and that is a slope, and it's going to be basically the same approach. We're going to come into analysis, raster functions, and we're going to build a slope. We're going to put it on our original DEM, or it'll be weird. Create a new layer. And this is going to look really crazy. And the reason this is so dark is because over in the contents, you can see our steepest slopes are lighter in color. So since this map has a lot of uh, area that isn't very steep or a uh, high slope, it's really dark. It's dominated by black. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this. I'm going to invert the color scheme. And you'll see this creates something that by itself looks pretty dang cool. Um, I'll close out of here. Um, yeah, you can see like this is bringing out a lot more topography. But what I tend to do with the slope is I'll turn the transparency way up on that, something to closer to 80 or 85 and it might not seem like a lot but if you're working at larger scales it's a lot so i mean that's really what i wanted to show you guys is like i'm just grabbing these data from the internet and i'll turn off what i manipulated looks fine but i think what i did makes this look a lot better and the last thing i'll show you is that you can really bulk these things up and make them look like freaking nat geo uh, if you come into these color schemes and we're showing names, you'll see that we have designated color schemes for elevation data. I really like elevation 12. I use this quite a bit. And you can adjust different stretch types and different min and max values to, to manipulate the way this looks. But you can see we're starting to create a map that's really effectively showing a flat topography with a little bit of fluctuation from high peaks in white um, and that is representing higher elevations so you know that's pretty cool and when it comes to map making like when you get a feel for this kind of stuff i'll show you we're in map view now but maybe uh, i'm just interested in creating a layout so this is an eight and a half by 11 picture it as a piece of paper i'll make a map frame and what this map frame is going to be showing is the extent of our elevation data so that's pretty cool already. I might move this around a little bit in my layout view just for visualization purposes. I'll come in, close my activation. And then like now I would add reference layers to this like rivers, bodies of water, roads, uh, major cities maybe, or any other kind of <clears throat> data that you're interested in for the purpose of this map. But, you know, like really fast examples of putting in a scale bar, not paying much attention to proximity or like map making type of stuff. But like um, a legend is another example of like how we can communicate this elevation. I'll turn off a few things I don't want in here. Um, but then if we zoom in on this and I would change the, the formatting extremely, uh, but you know, now we're communicating that our lighter colors are approaching three kilometers above sea level and our, our lowest elevations are around a kilometer. So that's just fine. And you know, like I could go on all day. Maybe I, I need a lot long in here, right? Like there are just simple things and you get an, an eye. That's why the creative part of this is so fun is because you develop an eye for like, damn, all that is way too tightly spaced grid for the purposes of my map. Um, in fact, I don't even think I need a grid. So um, maybe I'll open this grid lines. See you later. And maybe something more relevant would be like intersection points. 
And so you can see now I have um, intersection points for lat and long, and I would still make that uh, interval much, much greater. Uh, but yeah, that that's just to show that we're creating maps out here and you can, once you get a feel for it, you can do it fast and you can really like get absorbed by this stuff. And I'm passionate about it and hopefully it was kind of fun just to see like an interface of a GIS software, if that's new for you, look in to GIS. Uh, maybe a good starting point would just be to look at, look at the Wikipedia for SRTM, Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, widely underappreciated. But I knew that was going to be fun, and it was for me, and hopefully it was at least uh, interesting for you. I might do more stuff like this in the future if it's well-received, um, but to be completely honest with you, I just thought this would be fun, and I know that there are some people out there who, who are interested in topography, <laughs> GIS, who isn't interested in topography. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going up to Montana in a few days. So this is perfect. Get me reoriented. I'm heading north. <laughs> but that's all, everybody. And we're out here December of 2023 in the Sonoran Desert. It's wonderful. I've been on the computer for a couple hours. I'm going outside. I hope you guys can go outside today. And I appreciate you giving this little chunk of time to me. And hopefully you learned something. And I hope that you can come back or check out the existing more field oriented stuff on my channel. And with that, I thank you. See you soon. Ciao.